Okay. All right. Welcome to the session on open educational resources uh, by your teacher leader fellows from the Maine Department of Education. Uh, my name is Dory Tripp. And I'm Jim St. Pierre. And we're happy to have you for this session. Today, we are talking about open educational resources. And so um, in our session today, we're going to kind of introduce you to what OERs are, um, share some resources for pre-K through five, sixth through 12th grade, um, as well as tools for teachers in their planning and other content specific materials for like music, art, foreign language, et cetera. And at the end, we'll share a survey where you can receive contact hours for your time in the session. Um, as we begin, uh, one of the things that we would like you to know is the kind of the various types of open educational resources. So most of the resources that we will be sharing with you today are open, free access, meaning everything that you can find is completely free, including like teaching materials, books, recordings, and tools. Some of the items might require a subscription to like an email service, um, but the, the resources themselves are still free. Um, you just have to subscribe to the certain organization. Um, and then other items might have a cost, um, but very low cost or um, donation based or whatever it may be. So those are kind of the three tiers of the materials that we'll be sharing with you. Um, and all of the organizations and resources that we share in this session are for reference and information, uh, tools for you. Um, they have not been endorsed by the Maine Department of Education. So we'll start right away with um, pre-K through five resources. Uh, so um, my wife is actually an elementary school teacher and I really tapped her expertise to uh, come up with some of these resources that she's been teaching for well over 20 years. And um, one of them, which you may be familiar at other levels, of teaching, if you're teaching the middle grades or the higher grades, is teachers pay teachers, which is a fairly recent development in the past 10 years or so, where uh, teachers create their own um, resources, post them up for um, many times for a small fee. Uh, but there's also quite a few uh, free resources. And so my wife will put in whatever topic she needs, like, um, you know, literacy, uh, uh, activity, and then um, says for free, and she'll come up with a, a host of different resources that she can then print, which is, there's no obligation to pay anything. And so it's a really good resource. They have quite a few free uh, elements here, even though, of course, as you can see here, you, you can pay for them as well. Uh, but uh, many sites like this, if you look for free you know, resources, you might have to pay for some, but they also offer quite a few that are free. Yes, you can sort in Teachers Pay Teachers, um, if you do price ascending um, for what you're looking for, the free items will pop up first and then all of the, the inexpensive resources after that. So if you do the price ascending, all the free resources will come up first, which I love. It's always a good place to check first. All right, let's head back. And the first thing my wife suggested uh, when we're talking about uh, free resources was author websites for PK to for pre K to five, um, and so one of her favorites is the Mo Williams website. But she has a ton of others, and they're on. Our, I have they're, they're listed on the Humanities website uh, as well. It's it's hard to list them all here, but he has a ton of books that you can read, activities for the books. Um, he has uh, you know gifts for people you know that that log in and that uses uses literature. Um, and so really useful. She likes Lynn Plurd is another author she works with. Um, and I have um, listed other ones that, um, you know, Eric Carl, who has, also has a museum that you can use. And I think you can actually get the exhibits to come to your school. So they have an exhibit that they will send and you can post it up in your school as well. So there's really other 
unique resources that are offered through the websites, the author websites as well. Really powerful tool for literacy at the pre-K to, to, to five grade levels. And we have a few more on here as well. Um, the DLTK crafts for kids. Really fun website here. Lots of great ideas, lesson plans um, for various crafts to do with your kids um, in this age group. Maybe you are working on a unit um, on the ABCs, the alphabet, if it's pre-K, kindergarten, um, countries and cultures, if you're doing a cultural unit, holidays, um, all these is really great. Lots of wonderful ideas. And like we said, it, everything is completely free. And Dory, if you, if you go down to the bottom there, oh. um, this is one page my wife liked was, um, it said printables, right? There was a printable page oh. uh, um, among the list of different things it was offering. Um, so she likes to go to that and find printable uh, materials that are free for the classes to work with. That's great. It saves her a lot of time. Absolutely. Which everybody could use. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Jim, are you going to do the mailbox or do? Yes. Yeah. This is one of the original resources that my wife used. And I actually tapped into it a little bit when I started teaching as well, just to get some ideas. Um, um, you can pay for a subscription, but it also has a great deal of uh, free resources, similar to Teachers Pay Teachers, right? But uh, more organized according to um, the publishers, right? It's not, um, it's, it's not sort of a, a, a gathering place for many teachers. It's an organized through the company mailbox, which... Uh, is a magazine, started off as a magazine. What I particularly liked about it was the way to search for materials is, is very clearly delineated from early childhood, early grades, and then later elementary. Um, so you can look through that and they update it frequently. Um, so that, you know, right now there's October, you know, come November, they'll have holidays. Uh, come December and January, they'll have winter activities. So everything is geared towards the time of the year. Um, some, some you pay, but uh, quite a few are, are for free as well. So really useful, well-organized website. Fantastic. Okay. Uh, Storyline Online. This is another great resource. I actually use this today um, with my students. So Storyline is a Emmy award-winning children's literacy website. And what's really cool about it is it streams videos of celebrity actors um, doing a read aloud with children's books. Um, it's available 24 seven to anybody, not just teachers, um, parents, caregivers can go to this website as well. Um, and it's 100% free. It's a nonprofit organization that relies on like grants and gifts to, um, fund it, but I love it. You can see all the books. They have featured books, um, today, as a matter of fact, with my students, I, we watched, um, Jabari Jumps, which is a really great book, uh, SEL kind of driven book about, um, kind of trying again, you know, trying something new and working up the courage to do something that, um, you've never done before and maybe scares you a little bit, um, which is great. And what I love also is they have activity guides that go with the read alouds as well. So you can click on the activity guides and um, a lesson plan will come up, a suggested lesson to do um, after the read aloud. So take a second to load, but just to give you an idea of what it looks like, suggested grade levels, themes. So it's a really great free resource. These are also, I find really great to use um, as sub plans as well. If, if um, you have a sub and need a good plan to go along with a read aloud. So, and that's another great one. And along those lines as well, I know a lot of pre-K through five teachers might already know this resource, but it's definitely worth mentioning Epic um, I became familiar with it during 
the pandemic, um, but there are plans or Epic School or plans for educators. You can go on there and your students can get a class code and they have free access to so many books um, and so many different topics. And it's great. Um, I believe it also helps the teacher track what your kids are reading, which is fun and helpful. So another great way to get digital access to books. Right. So I'm not as familiar with it as you are, but it uh, looks like they have a lot of age groups up through middle grades. Yes, they do in lots of topics. Um, my son found a lot of really great books in here. Some of them are audio books, which is really great too for some of our learners. Um, lots of really great stuff. And um, students can access, like I said, with a class code um, as well which is wonderful. So that's Epic. Right, we have a few more pre-K through five resources to share with you as well. Right, so a lot of these uh, I was looking up when I found as, as a secondary teacher, I was looking for audio books for my, se my seniors actually for Frankenstein and other uh, similar stories that they find hard to read and but they wanna get through them. And so if they can bring in a different sense into the reading experience, they can understand it a lot easier. Um, and so I was looking through, I found these great audio sites. Um, so like some are limited, Story Nori, Light Up the Brain. Um, uh, well, Story Nori is great for young children and um, it has quite a few books, but not very current books, right? So if you have some older stories you want to have your students or to give them an audio um, experience, probably at home or wherever it is, you can, you can lead them to that. Light Up the Brain's good because um, it has a lot and they're very short, like most are under 10 minutes. So they can have a quick reading experience um, with an audio element involved as well. Uh, Hoopla and Overdrive, I, I found those great because um, they're very current. You can get books that have been published very recently and the students can get an audio file that's connected to it. The only issue is that they're through their local libraries or the school library. So that those organizations have to use that service, which I don't think is particularly expensive, but they, those libraries do have to subscribe to it. You know, I mean, they have to buy books for their libraries. And so in this case, these provide services where they can subscribe to it and then people can use those resources for free. And there's quite a few schools in Maine that, that not all schools, but there's quite a few schools and, and quite a few public libraries throughout Maine that actually take advantage of these services. And I suspect in the near future, there will be quite a few more because I think um, this is sort of the direction that you know, literacy is going and writing more electronic resources for students. But uh, I really like those two because a lot of the reading is very current. Perfect. And um, some more resources to start some resources um, for grades six through 12. Um, there are some resources here to access textbooks for free. Jim, do you wanna to speak to that? Yeah, I first became familiar with these sites because um, I teach at colleges at night and uh, a lot of the, particularly the community colleges are going towards, uh, they call them no low courses, no cost or low cost co co courses. And so they gave this, uh, the librarians are very versed in these and they gave us some, um, excuse me, some um, good websites to look at these among them. And um, it's amazing how many textbooks, I mean, textbooks can be prohibitively expensive and they were trying to get uh, away from that to make school affordable uh, for a lot of uh, larger population. Um, and so I've incorporated in my courses quite a few of these, but I've also been able to find things that work at the secondary level. And I suspect people could probably even find some at the, uh, at the middle school level, depending on what you're looking for. And some of them have great search engines for level, I think. Um, can we try OpenStax? Sure. There's no cost whatsoever for any of these, right? This is all open. Many of them are published through different colleges um, and databases and, and different um, programs that house them. So if you look up at the top, the search engine go by, goes by subject, what technology you can use. So that's one way of looking for it. Um, 
these these I find are are more for upper students, I think, but there there are some uh, probably some texts and some resources that can be used for like there's a K to twelve, but they're they're limited. These are mostly for you know I, I use these mostly for my secondary students, um, and I think that the, the other site on here. Um, Open, li open textbook library has a great search engine that you can look through. Right, you can browse subjects that you wanna, you wanna work with. And I think you can also, once you get there, you can actually limit it to the age group you wanna have, you wanna work with oh, as well. Let's try it. Oh yeah, you can do filters. You should. Oh, different no. formats. Yeah, yeah formats so you have quite a few options here but it doesn't look like you, you can search on this one yeah still a great variety and and more variety than i think um openstax has in terms of the grade levels i can use yeah. and maybe it's libre text that has the uh, it up. libraries yeah quite a few here i um i teach biology as well and um so we use some resources from bio and there are some uh, of these sites have better resources than others so you want to look through all of them um there's some of the science uh, like biology is sort of sketchy on some of them but uh, might have some um, more more useful texts and and, and one collection versus another Certainly quite a few for English and the humanities. You can just look through and find a ton just because there's been so much published about those and they don't really lose their um, applicability. Okay. So for six more six through 12 resources, not just um, textbooks, there's some a few websites that you can head to. Um, CK through 12, this one is also, you can find free online textbooks here as well. Um, once it loads, take a peek. So again, here, very similar. Um, look, free STEM teaching resources right at the top, first thing. You can browse by subject. They have things K to five to um, a wide range. You can explore various things here. So um, again, good to, Flexbooks has been used by more and more sites now. Flexbooks okay. where you can actually create, you can bring uh, open educational resources together into your own textbook. Mm. Uh, so that can be really helpful as well. Awesome. Very good. There's another great resource. OER Commons. All free. Uh, here's the one. Here, here's the search engine that I yeah. thought was great. Yeah. Yeah. So subjects. It's going to load. There we go. Educational level. Say so we want to do middle school. Search. You can even put a topic in the search engine. And if you're trying to appeal to, to a certain standard, it has like hundreds of standards based on your state standards mm -hmm. or national standards. Yeah, look at that. It's awesome. Very cool. So again, I mean, a lot of these sites, you have you might have to do like a little bit of legwork, you know, digging to to find what you want, but for the very affordable price of free, um, mm -hmm. that might be well worth it for you and your students. Same with the Library of Congress. This is a great resource um, for some things that you wouldn't necessarily expect to find in here. I was surprised when I was browsing around Library of Congress to find notated music, for example. Um, as a music teacher myself, film and video, audio recordings, things like that. Um, but of course, some of the stuff that you would expect to find in here as well, um, like historical text, 
uh, yeah, legislation, for, maps, <laughs> things. Yeah, like great that. for primary resources. I also have, uh, I like to put a, a visual on everything that I create, and it has a ton of photos and drawings that you can bring out, many of them classic. So, yes. Uh, to expose kids to that. So, a really great, um, as you can see, lots and lots and lots of free information in here. All right. So, that is six through 12. Um, so I've used um, I've used Pressbooks to create um, a, it's a publishing platform, fairly simple. It takes a login and stuff, but it's essentially free and you can bring together a lot of published resources that, you know, flex similar to Flexbooks, but not reliant on another platform to, to publish it. So a um, lot of a lot of uh, the OERs, the uh, um, uh, online educational resources, open educational resources use Pressbooks to bring their resources together. Um, and then LibriVox, I thought was great because this is people reading books and then posting them. Um, I find that sometimes uh, in my with my more reticent students, in order to get them to read, um, they need a, an audio recording and they, they like something very current that speaks to their experience. And many of those books don't have audios, audio files connected to them. So I would read, and which is a lot of work, but um, I found on LibriVox that other people had already read them. So very useful um for i mean sometimes the voices aren't great they're not professional but they are reading it and so that can be really helpful to students wonderful and you can post your own as well there which is pretty neat great so some um resources for teachers for planning we did look at teachers pay teachers already on a previous slide but there are so many resources in there um like we said before, I mean, if you need a worksheet on a certain topic for a certain age level, um, they have planners and organizers for both staff and students, graphic organizers, um, you name it, you can find something in there that a teacher has made. And I think it's wonderful because it's real teachers like you and me, um, you know, just putting up things that they've made for their classroom on this website. And so they're the you're paying a teacher for their work, um, which is great. But again, there are a lot of free resources in there as well. Um, you can make an account, but it's not like a paid subscription. You just pay for what you buy if you want to buy something or find things that are free. Um, some tools that I use on the daily, um, and I know a lot of my colleagues do as well, um, you know, Google Slides presentations um, for students um, is really kind of the way we're going these days rather than writing everything up on a chalkboard or whatever. And it's really nice to find a slide deck that has already kind of been put together for you and you can just put in the information. So I go to, my two go-tos are Slides Go and Canva. If you are a Google school and use Google Classroom and everything else, Slides Go is great um, because you can just transfer, transfer the empty slides right into your Google account. Um, but they are very professional looking and free, most of them. Some of them do say there are a premium. You can have a premium account to get some things, but um, Anything, you can search for anything in here, certain color palette, a certain topic, and they have images um, loaded in there for a basic topic. So these are great um, to use here in like Halloween patterns. That's very relevant. Elementary school kids would love that. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's great um, to have these multiple slides with graphs and things that you can just use and just input your own information on. Um, the same goes for Canva, and I really like Canva, not just for slide decks, but you can also create posters and visuals um, through Canva, free for educators. Um, they have all kinds of stuff, there. newsletters, newsletter templates, um, anything you can think of really, you can find in here on Canva. And like I said, there's, you can have a free account. And then kind of like slides go, if you want to, you can also pay for 
a pro pro account as well. Everything is so visual in the world today. It's nice to have something organized like that for you. Absolutely. And actually, it's not only just organizational for the kids, but it also like transforms kind of how I organize my teaching electronically, you know, changing, projecting the standards and then clicking to the next activity and things like that. Um, I actually, my plan book is a, is a Google Slides template. So super helpful and free. Uh, so as far as content specific, um, we have a lot of information on this page and um, we will upload this, um, this slide deck so that you don't have to memorize anything. All the links will be right here, clickable links that you can go find. But um, we covered on the other, other pages, um, mostly literacy based um, websites, some, you know, history things in there as well. But if you teach a specific content like music, art, English, foreign language, biology, all those things, there is, you can find a plethora of information on any of these um, subjects for free. For music, there are a handful that I love and I use very often, um, the Smith Smithsonian Folkways. Um, if you're a, uh, aware or familiar with the museum, Smithsonian, they have their own kind of music version, their folkways, lots of recordings. Um, and what I love particularly about this um, as a music teacher, you know, our standards, we have to connect, do cross curricular connections to um, other cultures around the world. This is wonderful. So this is an interactive map that you or your students could use. And you can click anywhere on this map and it can it brings up some music descriptions um you can find lesson plans for various places in the world as well to teach the music and it's wonderful um they have all kinds of stuff on here holiday music from around the world etc so this is a great resource for music teachers. Let's look at a, oops, let's look at a few more. Mama Lisa's is kind of similar. I like this. This is more geared toward K through five um, children's songs, but you can find songs by continent, by language. Um, there, a lot of these songs come with like games to play with them and so directions to the games pronunciations translations um, and i use this with my pre through pre-k through five students in music class let's continue on um classics for kids i won't click on that but that is um another great website that was aimed um at teaching children about classical music and so they have a lot of interactive games on there that you can play with your students or students could um, navigate to that website on their own a lot of composer biographies and really kid friendly terms which is wonderful and then um, this is one of my favorites if you teach band um, at any level i teach beginner band so i use this resource a lot but Dr. Selfridge Music, um, it's wonderful. Everything on his website is free. There are video tutorials of how to put your instrument together. So if your students forget something or need more practice when they're at home and they need a little video to watch, they can watch tutorials. There's free sheet, sheet music. Um, I can click, for example, flute here and he has uploaded all kinds of free sheet music for beginner flute um, and all the other instruments as well. So this is a great resource um, for band teachers, which is wonderful. 
We use this a lot in my class. <clears throat> Moving on to visual art. I'm just gonna close out some of these tabs. So for visual art, there are various resources that you could use as well. Um, the National Gallery of Art, free lesson plans on here, virtual tours of exhibitions, stuff that you could use with kids um, at various age levels. You just would have to kind of research through there. Um, but let's see, we've got learning resources for teachers. And although I do not teach art, this was a resource that was shared with me with my by my art colleagues um, that do use some of this stuff. So is Deep Space Sparkle. This one was really fun. This is geared toward pre-K through five art classes, um, but so many ideas for activities. Um, I think you can subscribe for more information as well, but there's a lot of free stuff right in here. So indigenous, how to celebrate Indigenous Peoples Day. There's all kinds of great um book extension uh, um, options, Acorn project, as you can see, and just keep scrolling through. There's so many ideas of things that you can do in the art classroom on Deep Space Sparkle. And then a few more in here, the Incredible Art Department and the Shack Art Center. There's all kinds of free lesson plans and tutorials in there as well. Jim? Right. So I remember uh, years ago in the 90s when the internet was just starting, uh, this guy, this professor, I think from Chicago, made national news because he was putting the entire works of Shakespeare online. Well, now that's not a big deal, right? So there are actually some organizations that have sort of made that their their mission in, in, in life is to bring books that have lost their copyright uh, into the public forum. And Project Gutenberg, excuse me, some of you may have found out, but it's worth noting, it was one of the first ones that was gathering all of the books that have been sort of not 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 even out of print, but um, have um, their original copyright was lost. And the same thing with the Internet Archive and Open Library, which actually has more, in some cases, more current books than Project Gutenberg, which is just um, just books that have lost their copyright. Um, if we go down to history, the um, the Open Textbook Library, we've already reviewed the Open Textbook Library. If you want to click on mm -hmm. that, because some of the free textbook resources don't have um, have better resources for some topics than the other. And I think the Open Textbook Library has a great selection of history books. Yeah, I'm going to click on that. Can we click on that? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. And so this brings you through um, some of the textbooks that are offered. And these are well-regarded textbooks, right? Um, some are very current. This is copyright year of 2023. Uh, and uh, all well-regarded authors and publications. And you can scroll you can scroll down just a little bit, but I mean, they go into a great variety uh, in many different cases, uh, you know, covering the entire history of the, of, of the human experience. Um, and some cover the art experience, some cover music. I mean, there's a whole host of different things that you can, you can access here. And so these are really useful. And a lot of my colleagues um, have made use, use of some of these textbooks. We don't need to go to Library of Congress. That's a great resource for, um, you know, primary documents, especially. Um, I also teach biology, which I think falls under the humanities umbrella, right? And uh, that was hard to find a good open educational resource for biology. OpenStax, I think, has one of the better ones. If you want to click on that. And so it has anatomy, it has astrology, it has particularly um, a several different kinds of biology. So some of these, I have, you know, reticent students, I have advanced students, and some, so they have a lot of different, um, um, uh, you know, 
different um, types of textbooks depending on the level of student that you're working with. So that can be very useful as well. So this is one of the best selections of anything biologically or, or um, uh, natural sciences related. All right, and so those of us who teach foreign language, there's a lot of resources out there as well. Um, my son, last year, his Spanish teacher actually used Duolingo, which is an app, um, which I use um, just for myself, but I didn't realize that they have it for students, for schools. And so my son was able to create a school account um, and sign up and for free, be able to learn Spanish, which was, this is a really fun way for your students to learn um, kind of as a, like a side practice um, because it almost feels like a game and it's very conversational. Um, if you've never tried Duolingo before, I recommend it. It is a really great way to learn a language. And I, I can see, you know, especially the middle school and high school level, as a secondary resource for kids to practice the language. Um, this is a great, great place to start because um, it's so interactive. I think very different than the way I learned language back when I was in school. Um, there's also a few other places as well that offer free um, practice, whether it be like flashcards or um, like, dictionaries and things like that. And so learn a language and open culture as well, which is great because it also provides some cultural context um, as well. I'm sure that there are more resources on some of these, um, on these topics and, and many, many more that we just don't know what they are yet. Um, so if anybody has resources to share, Jim and I are more than welcome to add them to our list that we put on our um, website and our resources page. So please feel free to reach out with anything. If you if there's a big resource that you love that we missed, please let us know. So that leads us uh, to the end. Uh, again, we just kind of scratched the resource, uh, the surface of these resources that are free for educators, but we hope that um, you may have found something in this session that you didn't know about before um, that you are excited to go peek at and try. Um, if you would like to receive contact hours uh, for this, the time you spent with us, um, we do have a link to this Google form. You just have to fill out a few survey questions and then we'll send some contact hours your way. So thank you very much for joining us. Um, our emails are listed here. And again, um, if you are unfamiliar, our website through the Maine Department of Education, the Humanities website is here. This is our Humanities News. And Jim has done a really wonderful job uh, putting up everything that we have shared. Um, this presentation will be up here eventually, um, but you can find all the links and this presentation, you'll be able to find it right here on this website once we get it uploaded. So this is our website for humanities. Anything else you'd love to say, Jim? No, thank you very much. Uh, look forward to um, doing future professional developments and having you all attend them.